8. Soon as the Lord of Heaven had sprung his horse over the horizon into the blue field, Solomon rose, drunk with the wine of sleep, and set himself a stirrup for the field. He and a troop of princes, kings and blood, kings too, and the kingdom, troubling tribe of beauty, all young in years and courage, bat in hand, galloped a field, tossed down the golden ball, and chased so many crescent moons a bull, and all alike intent upon the game, Solomon still would carry from them all the prize and shouting, Paul, drive home the ball. This done, Solomon bent him as a bow to shooting from the marksmen of the world. Called for an unstrung bow, himself the cord, fitted unhelped and nimbly with his hand. Twanging made cry and drew it to his ear. Then fixing the three feathered fowl discharge. No point in heaven's azure but his arrow. Hit nay, but heaven were made of adamant. Would overtake the horizon as it rolled. And whether aiming at the fawn afoot, or bird on wing, his arrow went away. Straight like the soul that cannot go astray. When night came, it releases man from toil. He played the chess of social intercourse. Prepared his banquet hall like paradise, summoned his hoary-faced musicians, and when his brain grew warm with wine the veil, flung off him of reserve, now lip to lip, concerting with the singer he would breathe, like Messias, life into the dead. Messias? Now made of the melodious moving pipe, a sugar cane between his lips that ran, men's ears with sweetness, taking up a harp between its dry string, and his finger fresh, struck fire, are lifting in his arms a lute, as if a little child for chastisement, pinching its ear, such cries of sorrow wrung, as drew blood to the eyes of older men. Now sang he like the nightingale alone, now set together voice and instrument and thus with his associates night he spent his soul rejoiced in knowledge of all kinds fine edge of his wit with split a hair and in the noose of apprehension catch a meaning air articulate in word his verse was like the plaitis his discourse the mourners of the beer his penmanship, tablet and running reed, his worshippers, fine on the lip of youth, as the first hair, drove pinmen as that lovers to despair. His bounty was as oceans, nay, the seas, self but the foam of his munificence, for it threw up the shell. But he, the pearl, he was a cloud that rained upon the world, derms for drops, the banquet of whose bounty, but hatims. Churlish in comparison. And there's three um, stupors, we can call them. You know, you got the stupor of living and dying. You got the stupor of sleep. And you got the stupor of insanity. Aside from that, there's the ones not excused from stupor. The uh, stupor of the shock of the level of evil that a person has done. Um, and then there, and there's the stupor of intoxication. Now, intoxication is excused as well uh, in terms of survival. Not, oh, well, so you can sit like the other people. You should do drugs. Some guy talked like he was going to have me banned from a, from a house of worship because 
I am not in the condition to, to sit in certain postures. And I should do drugs. I should go there. I should do, I, I should get high. I, I should take opiates and, 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 and other stuff in order to just sit there for the moment and um, really to attend a service and to, uh, to, to, to um, just, just accept that I'm standing or, or sitting with my leg off to the side or something like that. But, um, 